So we know how it feels to be on lockdown, quarantine. We all know how it feels. So from a technical perspective, what does that mean when it comes to what COVID has done? Well, it's done a lot, positively, negatively. COVID has changed the dynamic when it comes to technology. Some things must quickly change and some things must go. We have seen the recent change in lifestyle from up close personal, so hey, how you doing, to everything remote. We are beginning to see a difference when it comes to our new reality. We're coming to a new perspective of how we go to work, handle groceries, get deliveries, contactless transactions. Everything's changing now. And within tech, systems are becoming more scalable, things are more dynamic, automated, and we're seeing that in a very spontaneous growth. Satya Nadella, CEO of Microsoft, said that there's been a two years of digital transformation in the last two months. So what that means is what we would have accomplished in two years, we've accomplished in two months. Very, very impressive. And with that rapid change of growth means a lot when it comes to stressing the economy, stressing technical systems, stressing you guys out. I wanna consider these times the great migration to the cloud. I made a blog post about it. Um, I want you guys to check it out. So let's take a minute to talk about what has changed, uh, some of the things that are happening, some of the things that will happen in response to this, and let's get into it. We've been forced to change our business practices immediately. We were more upfront, take your kids to school, drop them off, take your dog, go into the office. You know, we, we were a more front facing economy. Now when COVID has hit, everything has moved. This is a global thing. Much older companies has been forced to keep up with the demand or close their businesses for good. No one could predict how this could have happened. That's huge. So what's affected? Let's get into it, right? Cloud. A recent study by Log Monitor states that 87% of enterprises will accelerate their cloud migration. That means that we're looking at a huge demand in the cloud to up to at least 2025. Companies are demanding scalable and automated solutions. Tech professionals notate that. So we're seeing a lot more companies and systems be more open to the cloud and moving into the cloud, get a little bit up to speed when it comes to 21st century tech. Uh, we're seeing more companies be more acceptable to remote, okay? We have remote schooling, remote learning, more remote working. We're all seeing a bunch of avenues grow within the remote space, and that's good. Second one, remote work. Most of us are working remotely as we speak. We traded our regular offices for home offices, mixed with kids, dogs, a Munich mics. <laughs> and Zoom calls. Schools and companies combined are learning and working remotely. Our kids have schedules they need to follow and they can learn material virtually as if they were in front of the class. Companies such as Coursera have seen jumps in online enrollment and Google Classroom are, are becoming the gold standard when it comes to learning in the classroom. Google and other tech firms report their staff won't be requiring them into the office for the rest of the year, with others stating a permanent remote option. Traditional companies are considering remote work as a serious option, and it's great. I've worked in teams where the manager felt we couldn't get anything done if we weren't physically in the office, and it's not the most scalable. Here we have teammates across the world that can log in whenever they want, whenever you set a time, whenever it's comfortable with them. Unfortunately, there are a few downsides as well. Some report low engagements in students and workers, maybe due to the global pandemic that's going on. And some are reporting work, they work more than they do in the office. And that's mostly due to not disconnecting, which I personally suffer from. Next one, increase in automation. Contactless deliveries, smart factories, software automation, process flows, data automation, companies that want to see and provide a synergist analytics to make better sales when they are crucial. Are some of the things that we are seeing growth in? Next one, traditional financial transactions. Bitcoin's on the rise again. Dogecoin is cute. Ethereum's doing well. Overall, the demand to invest in cryptocurrency is continuously rising and falling. There are many reasons why cryptocurrency is up. It could be fueled by the celebrity promotions by Elon Musk and synergist with the need for cryptocurrency for space travel, but Crypto is needed, well needed. We look for banks to solve contactless transactions. Countries like UK, France, Japan, and much, much others are using contactless transactions, both in purchases, train fares, and much more. Plus, it's just a drag to have so many coins around, right? I still can get confused with what, what a pence is or a pound. Next one, the use of advanced technology by traditional governments. Everyone knows that government has been notorious for hiding a bunch of secret technology, right? But when it comes to traditional governments like city municipalities, we're seeing a growth in them using big data models for COVID. In Chicago, they hired 
teams of data architects and data specialists to map and model peaking where it's increasing or decreasing. We're seeing governments use predictive analysis and data models on a macro and a micro scale. Small towns, bigger cities, and other countries implement this technology as well. Plus, we're seeing more and more governments get on Zoom, and that's really good. Thank you guys for checking out this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Tell me what you guys thought about it. If you wanna see more, let me know, and I'll see you guys soon.